We flew into Broome just as the sun was going down and there were those colours in the water again and your heart lifts, or at least mine does, every time I come back here. And uh, we spent last night at the home of one of the old Broome families. What a, what a privilege that was and had mud crabs under the mango tree. And what mud crabs they were. We had a bit of music had some noodles. I travel around the world a lot. You might think this is pretty special. It is incredible. There is nowhere on this earth that is even vaguely like it. And there are a lot of places in Africa that I love, particularly the Okavango Delta. I've been there quite a few times too. And that's pretty amazing. But it doesn't have some of the incredible things that the Kimberley has. And it doesn't have the free life either that is in Broome and that is in the surrounding country. Just watching this family last night, all these little kids running around free and happy, no problems here. It is just a beautiful, beautiful place and a wonderful free lifestyle. And I tell you what, if I had the privilege of living here, I wouldn't allow anyone to get anywhere near ruining that. I wouldn't give them the time of day. So we come back here, not for any reason other than that we love it. I don't have any business interests here. I don't own any shares in any company that's here. I'm not running for any office. I'm not a member of any of these groups as much as I admire them all. Or the Wilderness Society who've done wonderful things with me in Tasmania. I'm not a member of anything. I'm not trying to get anything. I just come here and I realise you might say, well, you're a tourist, really. What do you really know about this community? What do you really know about the country? And the answer to that is I can never, ever have the knowledge that, that you all have and that, and that these extraordinarily expert people have. I can just admire the forests and the rivers and the mountains. I can't begin to understand the life that you have. But I know other forests and rivers and mountains. They're a bit different to these ones, but they're useful in this instance. Because I know a lot of you people might wonder, well, maybe we don't want this thing. But what can we do about it? We've got a Premier who is absolutely committed to it, who has got blinded by anything else. The same Premier, of course, who was going to build the canal from the Fitzroy River down to Perth. That was a pretty good idea. That was largely applauded by just about every economist and engineer in the world, if you recall. I'm quite, not quite sure what happened to that idea, but Colin Canal, as I call him, is certainly somebody who's very committed to industrialising the Kimberley. Not just James Price Point, but the whole Kimberley, as you heard, he doesn't make any bones about that. In my experience, politicians usually, when they're promoting these things, they say, well, don't worry about it, it's just one little part. Uh, this, we're never going to go anywhere else, but this guy, he's different to anyone else I ever met. He actually comes out and says, I want to industrialise the Kimberley. <laughs> he's a very unusual custom. Still, he wanted to build a canal, so I guess we know from that that uh, he's an unusual customer. <laughs> but the forests and the rivers that I know are a bit different. When I walk down through wooded areas, they're the wood panelled corridors of big companies. From the boardroom down to the CEO's office. And the rivers I know are the rivers of money. They're a bit sludgy sometimes, but they run wild, I can tell you. And that's one of the ways that you can win this. You might think all the power rests with the politicians and with the company. And by gee, they're trying to convince us all of that, aren't they? We just came back 15 minutes before we walked into this room from the site of James Price Point. And uh, 
pretty interesting down there. Got stopped by the only traffic light anywhere in the Kimberley <laughs> on that road. And there were some gentlemen there who looked vaguely like Arnold Schwarzenegger without the muscles. <laughs> they, they really did. They looked like something out of the Terminator standing there photographing us. And I'm not quite used to that, you know. I don't get photographed all that much when I stop at a traffic light. <laughs> Maybe you do. But I would have thought the last place in Australia that you get pulled up at a traffic light and have some goon, and that's what they look like. People, people who refuse to identify themselves. I got out of the car and walked up to them and said, I'm Jeffrey Cousins. What is your name? They just stood there and stared. <laughs> refused to say who they worked for and just filmed us. I would have thought the last place on earth such a thing would ever happen would be in the free, beautiful Kimberley. And yet there they are up there. <laughs> And then we drove up to the entrance to the site. We'd flown over the works that are going on up there. And they are ripping that land to bits, I can tell you. In 10 days, you wouldn't believe what's happened up there. The land is bleeding. Great red scars. And the blood is coming out of it. 